Praise the Lord, IPC Hebron. Praise God. I like to echo what Brother Finney was reading here. He was reading from Ephesians 5, verse 19 in Malayalam. And let me read it out in English as well. Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. It says, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's what we were able to do. We were able to cry out to the Father, Appa, right? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And that is the message for today as well. We'll be in Ephesians chapter 5, if you would go there for today's message. Um, I like to, as an introduction to start uh, by saying that most children imitate their parents' traits, correct? Including their fathers, right? Sometimes without even realizing it. Sometimes I notice my kids saying things that I said or making gestures that I made, right? Having mannerisms that I have. Even more peculiar was when one of my sons, uh, and my wife says this a lot, oh, he's uh, like one of my forefathers, like my Apachin or something like that, right? Right? Do you know, do you think it's genetics or do you think it is uh, something that is passed down? It could be both. If you go to the doctor, uh, what does the doctor ask for your family history? That's right. That's right. We ask a detailed family history. For one example is, we ask for the parent's height. If the mother and the father are a certain height, the child is expected to be a certain height. Right? And if they're not growing up to that height, then we think something is wrong. Or if they're growing too fast, there's something wrong as well. Suffice it to say that we are always imitating, whether it is knowingly or unknowingly, the positive and the negative characteristics of our parents. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. So God the Father gave us the best self-portrait when he sent his son Jesus Christ to show us how we should live. Hebrews chapter uh, 1 starts off by saying, God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets and to the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these last days has spoken to us in his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he has made the world. And then it is talking about Jesus. He is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the word of his power. And then in Hebrews 12, 2, it's, uh, it starts to uh, talk about the revelation of uh, Jesus uh, as a representation of God and tells us to fix our eyes upon Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus, throughout his ministry on earth, emphasized that he imitated his father. He said, truly, truly, I say unto you, the son cannot do nothing by himself unless uh, it is something that the father is uh, telling him to do it. So in likewise manner, we as the children of God, what does Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 say? That we are adopted into the family of God. We are predestined and adopted into the family of God. How many of you believe that as you're sitting here, that you are a child of God? Amen. You're a child of God. What a privilege uh, that we have. Uh, everyone is created in the image of God. As we know, uh, man was created in the image of God. But Adam, the first Adam, Adam uh, committed sin and man fell away by the wayside, right? But there needed to be a second Adam, and that was our Lord Jesus that came into the world and took the sin of all mankind. And if you believe in our Lord Jesus and confess him with our mouth, uh, then you have the right to be known as the child of God. If you're a child of God, then you need to imitate the father. Be like daddy. Imitate the father. And that's our key verse today. If we would come with me to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. Another version says, 
Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. See, there's a therefore that this chapter starts with. So we need to understand a little bit more about the background. And we have studied the book of Ephesians for many months here uh, a few years ago. We know that the first three chapters out of the six chapters of the book of Ephesians tells us about who we are in Christ. And 1 verse 5 said that we are children adopted into the family of God. If you remember that sermon, we are adopted into the family of God. And then the next three chapters, chapter 4, chapter 5, and chapter 6, goes on to say, if you are truly the children of God, how you should act and behave. Chapter 4 particularly stresses the things that we should not do. And I feel, I feel like we've been talking about that quite a bit. And so we'll go on to chapter 5, and it says, Therefore, see, those are the things that you ought not to do, and therefore, what are we to do? Be imitators of God. Not out of compulsion, not out of some sort of duty, but out of delight, because we are his beloved children. Amen. Amen. If we are his beloved children, we want to imitate our God. It's not out of any duty, but it's out of delight. Amen? So if you are a child of God and you know it in your heart, you want to pay attention because you want to be imitators of God. If you go back to the Greek word of that word imitator, uh, it goes back to this uh, word that is called mimetes. Mimetes. And it means follower or imitator. The root of that word is where the English word mimic comes in. You know, I think we all have maybe a negative connotation about mimicry or, you know, you think it's like making fun or like, you know, uh, doing some sort of spoof. But no, here it is talking about it in a positive term. It is talking about it as being a follower, a true follower of Christ. And this is the only portion in the New Testament where it talks about following God. Uh, in this particular uh, uh, way of using that word mimite or imitating God. So we need to imitate God in not just some things that we do, but in everything that we do, it says, because you are his dear children. Amen. Amen. See, if I was a father and somebody told me, you know, your son looks nothing like you, you know, your son might look like somebody else, your neighbor or the milkman. That's not good, right? That's never good. If our Father God is testifying of us, you know, Minu doesn't look anything like me, but he looks like the world, how would I be looked upon? But he still loves me. He still loves me as a child of God. And he's telling me, hey, get back in shape. And so Ephesians specifically goes and talks about three things I want to get into. It talks about walking it out, walking our, our faith, and how can we mimic God. So in 5 verse 2, it talks about walking in agape love. In 5 verse 8, it talks about walking as children of the light. And then in 5 verse 15, it talks about walking circumspectly or carefully in wisdom. So these are the three ways that we can look more and more like our daddy. Amen. So what is the first? Uh, let's look at walking in agape love. Can we go to verse five, uh, chapter 5, verse 2? It, it goes on to say, And walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. The example, the perfect role model for us is our Lord Jesus. He was... The prized possession in, in heaven. He was there when creation was. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And God the Father decided it okay to send his only begotten son to die on the cross. A, a shameful death. Uh, those who hang on the cross are cursed it says. And he went to the cross to die for me. 
When you get that in the bottom of our heart and understand the mercy and the grace of the Lord, uh, especially the Father and the pain and the agony it took for him to send his only begotten son, Jesus, and the obedience of Christ and the sacrifice of Christ and everything he did for us, we understand how to love. It is not what I can get back, but laying down our lives in loving the Father who gave so much for us. It is to love our brother and sister because we know we don't deserve it ourselves, right? Does anybody here think that they deserved what Jesus went through to save your sins? No. If you don't deserve it, the other person doesn't deserve forgiveness either. But if you got forgiveness, you need to forgive others and walk in love. Walk in love. You know, it goes on in the next few verses to talk about things that you ought not to do. But let me go on to the second way we are to walk. What is the second way we are to walk? Walk in the light, it says. Walk in the light. What does it mean to walk in the light? Ephesians 5, 8, it says, For at one time you were full of darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord, so walk as children of the light. Earlier in Ephesians, we've talked about this, where without Jesus, we are all naughty by nature. We are all evil. We want to look after our own desires. We want to see what you can do to get ahead. But once you become a child of God, your nature changes. You want to not do the deeds of darkness, but now you want to be a child of the Lord and walk in the light. Walk in the light as children of the light. The Lord has said in Matthew that you are the light of the world. We need to shine bright so that others can see Christ through us. If they are not seeing the Father in our life, how can they come to know about God? Amen. So walking in the light. And again, if you read the, por- the verses in between, it talks about the deeds of darkness. And I won't go into that. You can read chapter 5 yourself. It talks about things that we do with our eyes our tongue, in many, many ways, we still try to go back, even though we have been brought out of darkness, out of the miry clay, and into the marvelous light. If we are the followers of the Lord, then we need to live in the light and do deeds of the light. When there is deeds of the light, what does it also do? It brings exposition when there's darkness when there's things going on around us that are deeds of the dark when there's light the darkness goes away amen you know going back a step when we talk about love walking in the love it doesn't just mean you know that you love everything and and, uh, everybody that is what the world would like to tell you but you love what the Lord loves not the sins of the world you love what, the, what delights the heart of the Lord. You walk in the light and not in the darkness of the world. The third way we can mim- uh, mimic the Father, we can imitate the Father or be like Daddy, is to walk in wisdom. It says, look circumspectly or carefully then how you should walk. So, It is not something that we just let happen in our life. You know, you wake up in the morning, you go throughout the day. We have to be careful in how we live. It needs to be an active decision. It says, not as the unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time. And pastor has talked about this, right? Redeeming the time. What is wisdom? Walk in wisdom. Pastor has given many sermons about this. We need to understand the times that we live in. And understand that the coming of the Lord is at hand and the days around us are evil. We need to know the time and be careful in how we walk in wisdom. You know, uh, the verse that was just read by uh, Brother Finney here also goes on to say how we ought to do this. It says that we need to be filled with the Spirit. 
We need to sing psalms, sing songs as we just did, and cry out uh, to the Father God through the sacrifice that was given and that made us all equal at the foot of the cross. So how can we mimic the Father? There's three ways here in this portion. We need to walk in agape love. Walk in agape love. You know, English only has this one word for love, but there is phileo, brotherly love. There's agape, and then there is eros, or the sexual love, and then there is storges, right? Brotherly love, uh, or ch love for your children. But here it is talking about the love the Father has had for us that he would give his only begotten son and that love should take hold of us. And we need to understand that moment, every moment of our lives to understand that we need to love the Lord for what he has done for us as beloved dear children. So the key here is to understand at all moments of our life that we are the children of God. Even when we make mistakes... You might say that, you know, knowingly and unknowingly, mistakes come into my life. And we'll talk about that at the end here. The next thing is to walk as children of the light. Chapter 4 goes on to talk about the deeds of darkness. And in between, in verse 3 and such, it talks about the deeds of darkness. And I won't go into that. But we need to walk as children of the light in this world and spread light to the world around us. Thirdly, we need to walk as wise. The characteristics of walking wise is to be filled with the spirit of the living God and to have evidences, which is singing praise, giving thanks in all circumstances and submitting ourselves in the fear of the Lord and being careful how we walk in this world with wisdom, understanding the time, knowing that our, our time on earth is very limited compared to eternity and how much time we will have to spend with the Lord forever and ever. You know, you can look at this same three things and look at it in the opposite way. If I'm filled with hate, if I'm filled with no love for my brother who sits on the same pew as me, if I, I'm not overcome by the love of God, if I have deeds of darkness, not of the light, if I'm not understanding the time and redeeming the time and not walking in wisdom, you know, chapter 5 goes on to talk about uh, the husband-wife relationships. And in that particular portion, it talks about how the word is what, what we use. The word of God is what we use to uh, understand, uh, and understand and know how we are to live. The word of God, basic instructions before leaving earth, the Bible. That is how we walk in wisdom. Instead, if we're spending our time on other things and not reading the word and spending time living carefully, living in the light of eternity at all times, we cannot assume that we will walk into eternity. Amen. And as I said earlier, if we are truly a child of God, do I, Menu, have the qualities, love, light, wisdom, Walking carefully, reading the word, uh, singing praises and thankful at it in every circumstances. It is time that we examine ourselves. Are we mimicking our father or are we mimicking the world? Or worse yet, are we mimicking the devil? This is a question I have for each and every one of us today. As the worship team is coming up, I wanted to uh, read from... This particular song, um, Who Do You Say I Am by Hillsong's Worship. It's all, it talks about, who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but be, he bought me in. Oh, his love for me has bought me in. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. Amen. If you're a child of God that has been set free... Uh, and free indeed, we need to mimic the Father. Walk out our life mimicking the Father. Can we go to the summary slide? And uh, we need to walk it out, considering God for adopting us and making us his children. 
And our response is to walk worthily of his calling. Remember who our father is and walk in love. And love means marked submission, obedience, and love for the Lord and our neighbors. When people look at us, what do they see? Do they see the Father? Do they want to come to, the, to this saving knowledge of Christ? Or are they like, you know, I want nothing to do with that. Do they see a true child of God that is mimicking Christ, who is mimicking the Father? Even Paul, uh, in the beginning, uh, Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ, right? Can we boldly say that? Can we say that? Can we love selflessly? Live sacredly and shine bright for the kingdom of God. How is our life these days? Can we be like daddy more and more in our life? Because we are to follow his pattern. We are to model after his example. We are to resemble him almost like an apprentice. We are to produce a copy of his life on earth being a wholehearted follower and not just a fan of Christ and this does not just extend to external behavior traits but from the bottom of our heart our heart needs to be changed and internal motivation needs to be changed it's not just about looking good in front of others it's not just about how can I look good in front of others that's hypocrisy right but it is to Truly imitate the Father so that no one will say, Menu, you look nothing like your daddy. May God bless you all with these words. Yeah.